Hi everybody, welcome to the fifth in a series of ongoing discussions regarding motorcycle safety helmet standards. And in this particular video, I wanna talk about myths and misunderstandings uh, that I often hear about Snell. I wanna say thanks to my friends at Motion Pro. I hope they don't mind me using their, their pit board here as my prop. Uh, so um, right out of the gate, it's important you know, like all of these videos, this is my own personal opinion uh, based on studying the different standards, working with them, and uh, in this case, in some cases, speaking to people that I know over at Snell, and uh, it's what I've taken away from that. Um, if they saw this and they disagreed, I, I sure hope they'd speak up and, and correct me, um, because I wanna make sure that you guys get the right information. But let's take a look at some of these. Um, I, I partially addressed this too hard, you know, that, that Snell helmets are too hard. I discussed that earlier. Uh, first of all, as we've already discussed, it, their peak energies, actually for their two largest shells, they're lower than any other standard. Um, but in their overall energy management, they're very proud of the fact they, they feel that they manage more energy than any of the other standards. And I, I think they say it's like 40 to 80% more than DOT and 60 to 110% more than um, ECE. And uh, you know they're they're serious about managing energy. From their point of view, again, based on my understanding, uh, they would be they feel it's better that if a person were to get into an accident, it's better they they have a concussion than they don't survive. And that's a very difficult thing. You're not going to argue against that. Um, they have research to support their reasoning behind it. And uh, you know, if you think that it's too hard, then that's your decision. But there are really specific reasons that they choose to manage that extra energy and they can support that decision. Again, it's your right to disagree if you choose, but certainly you can't argue that it's based on, on logical reasoning. So, okay, next up, no modular. You know, Snell, absolutely, you, they won't pass a modular helmet. Well, you know, in 2005, a company that's no longer around, a helmet company by the name of Zeus, had one model that met the 2005 standard. And um, my company, LS2, had a product called the FF394 Epic, and it met and exceeded the Snell 2010 standard. So there's two examples that would blow that one out of the water. That's just not true. It's just that there have only been uh, a couple of companies now, including ours, that built a helmet that was rigid enough and, and designed properly to manage energy the way Snell wants it managed. So you can have a, a Snell approved modular. Uh, we haven't yet gone after uh, getting one through Snell 2015, but you never know. If you were interested in that, you should let me know and I'll pass it on. Uh, the next is no quick release strap. Well, um, you know, I think it's page 12 and section E in the standard itself directly talks about if it is a quick release strap, it must do this or not do that. Again, I don't remember the exact wording, but it's certainly covered in the standard. Again, it's one of those things where just because they haven't or no one has, has submitted a helmet uh, at, you know, to, to try to make it, uh, it doesn't mean it couldn't happen. Okay, then we get into two hit testing. And this is the one, when I'm in the field, uh, I hear people that, that I think they're misunderstanding what's being said here. Uh, you know, I know people that get really excited about that and they, their, their way of looking at it is they think that what that means is uh, if they were to fall and hit their helmet on the ground and tumble and hit in exactly the same place, that that's what this is designed to do. When in fact, it, it actually is uh, part of their testing procedure. Um, they hit the, same, the helmet in the same spot twice to achieve a certain test result. If they wanted to do it, um, if, they, if they wanted to do it in one hit, they'd have to dramatically raise the energy. And frankly, it's an expensive proposition to redesign their equipment or rebuild their equipment to accommodate that. So they feel that the double hit at the lower energy uh, ends up giving them the same, essentially the same data um, as that, that harder hit. Also, uh, if they had to go to that harder hit, it would put them even far, farther away from the head injury criterion, which is part of what ECE is based on. And there is a certain effort to, when I listen to these guys, they would like to find more common ground. Um, but at any rate, that, that is the, uh, essentially the reason that the two, you don't see EC and Snell approved in one helmet. Uh, that's kind of where the, the breakdown comes into play, so to speak. Okay, 
And finally, that uh, Snell helmet is, you have to have a Snell helmet if you want to race. Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Uh, virtually every sanctioning body in the United States allows either Snell or ECE. Now, if you want a Snell helmet to race in, you certainly, you know, that, that's a good choice. There's no question about that. There is a question. Some people would argue that's why we're doing this, but I think it's a great choice. Uh, but they are allowed. We have a, a drag racer now. Drag racing was the last that I'm aware of to finally accept an EC standard. They used to require Snell, but I think it was two years ago that that changed. And, and I have a young lady that drag races for us and, and is very fast. And she's been wearing EC e helmets from our company for a couple of years. So again, there you go. Some uh, myths and misunderstandings regarding Snell. Again, if somebody from Snell sees this and, and has any input or wants to correct anything I've said, I more than welcome that input. And uh, I hope this is useful information in helping you pick the, the standard that is best for you.